am so tired of trying to figure out if I'm still alive. I don't have the data. These are actually words my mother said to me shortly before she passed away from Alzheimer's disease. My name is Janet Biggs, in case you can't. Um, I'm a visual artist that's working at the intersection of art, science, and technology. In the course of producing my work, I've had the honor of working with institutions like CERN, JPL, the Mars Society. My work has also taken me inside of active volcano in Indonesia, um, into an area of conflict in the Horn of Africa. And I've spent months in the high Arctic of Svalbard filming. I've had to learn some new skills along the way, like how to film from the back of a camel <laughs> or inside of a spacesuit. Um, I now can uh, intubate and extubate. I can suture in microgravities. And I even had to learn how to negotiate for my own release at one point. Long story. Um, all of this is in pursuit of trying to figure out how an individual defines a sense of themselves, especially in the face of the extreme. A good friend of mine was also caring for his mother who had Alzheimer's disease. And late one night we were talking and he described it as like walking on Mars. For the past couple of years, I've been participating in and filming Mars simulation missions around the globe. International groups of scientists are invited to come together and conduct research in um, isolated and confined environments here on Earth in the hope of one day being able to do the same on Mars. They live in analog environments like the desert of Utah or in the very thin air of the Himalayas. Daily, they don a simulation spacesuit, run a decompression sequence in an airlock, and head out on EVAs, looking for specific, specific minerals or extremophiles, any kind of evidence of life. One of the best places in the world to find meteorites is in the Antarctic. ANSMET is a US-led National Science Foundation program that's searching for meteorites along the Transantarctic Mountains. And to date, they have sourced 22,000 meteorites, many of which can be confirmed as coming from the moon. My grandfather was an amateur mineral collector. He developed Alzheimer's disease when he was in his late 70s. And long after he could remember who I was, who my dad was, who any family member was, he could tell you such specific details from samples in his collection. On March 1st, around the corner, um, I am getting to send three rocks via a SpaceX launch um, up to the Interna International Space Station. Um, the rocks will be housed inside of a satellite, and the satellite will then be deployed from the ISS and orbit the Earth. The satellite is built as part of MIT Media Lab's Space Exploration Initiative, and it's built with three different levels, which form three gravitational fields. So one of the levels is benign and has zero gravity, or zero Gs, and the other two rotate with um, centripetal acceleration so that they mimic lunar gravity and Martian gravity. So I'll be able to take one of the lunar meteorites that was found in the Antarctic and send it back up so it can experience lunar gravity. And a Mars wannabe rock that I found on a Mars simulation will be sent up and get to experience Martian gravity for the first time. And a crystal from my grandfather's collection that held some of his very last memories. I'm going to send it to space and let it be weightless. This project will be realized both as a um, large multi-channel immersive video installation and also as a feature length film. Today, I have participated in four Mars missions and collected footage and information for this project. I've also um, I've researched and found the site of extraction of my grandfather's crystal, which was 25 kilometers into the Earth. Um, I filmed neuroscientists that are looking in the at the biochemical composition of a brain with Alzheimer's, um, examining the tau tangles and amyloid proteins. 
But you know, this project isn't just the story of these three rocks. Um, and it's also not a document of the science behind their acquisition. It really is a meditation on curiosity, on our shared humanity and our planetary future, on our ability to hope and to dream. I've had the privilege of going all over this globe um, and uh, seeing some of its most extreme environments, but I haven't gone to the Antarctic, and I need to for this project. So if you happen to have a good friend that works for the National Science Foundation, or a better friend that's, say, stationed at McMurdo, or if you have a boat with a steel hull that can slam into icebergs, or even better, if you've got a whole boatload of cash that can help me produce this project, please come find me upstairs and make my dream come true. Thank you.